Hey guys, my name is Christopher and this is my good buddy Zach. And we are driving around town in our electric converted van again. Here we are, waiting on a train. There are two trains oh, there, my friend. Shit. There are two trains there. We're gonna go wash it. This thing has been washed in what? Six years? <laughs> And it's probably been three years, honestly. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna go wash it, get it all cleaned up, and that is in preparation for vinyl. Yep, we got some sweet decals going on. Um, I think I think over the last few test drives, we've identified a problem: is that while we're out and about, people don't actually know that this is electric powered. You know, so I'm I'm thinking some obnoxious graphics. I think that would be perfect. I don't think obnoxious is the word. I think it's tasteful and period correct. It does have like a 80s tracksuit vibe to it going. <laughs> Which is absolutely period correct. So I'm excited about it. So if you're interested in seeing how vinyl decals are applied, the process is necessary to make uh, the metal ready for it. We're gonna be covering that in this episode and uh, it should be fun, so stick around. Well fun entertaining and we're, we're washing a car we went through the car wash what that pretty much does is knock off the first layer <laughs> and now we're really getting down to the nitty-gritty Christopher's gonna focus on the top getting it ready and I'm gonna go around the sides and get all the little stuff that uh, car wash doesn't get. So we're gonna get this thing so nice, so nice. I mean, so nice if you don't count all the rock chips hey. and scrapes. Hey, this thing is beautiful. <laughs> I didn't say it wasn't. It has an honest patina. All right, this is what we're trying to clean. It didn't really come out 100% from the car wash, so we're doing it by hand. We want it to look like that. Extra shiny. Okay, ready? So, we're gonna do a test, see how good it takes care of this oxidation, and Zach's gonna do a little tiny square on this light blue paint. This is a, a super light cutting compound, like barely cutting, just to remove that oxidation. Jeez. I'm surprised at how well it kind of shined up. Hey yeah, man. Perfect. But All right. That being said, <laughs> to do this whole car is going to take a bit of elbow grease. So here we go. It's like pro level clean. I'm going to try and capture the reflection here. Black side. Not wax it. It's like putting a suit on a turtle, you know? Just makes him look like a doctor. <laughs> Did you say a suit on a turtle? Yeah. You're telling me you don't see a turtle in a suit and you're thinking that guy must be a doctor of something. Doctor of archeology, span doctor of humane studies. It could be a medical doctor for all I know. But that turtle's distinguished. It's a lot of work, man. There's a similar one on the other side, too. So this roof has been painted. And it does look like there's some bonding issues between the bottom, the base layer, and the top layer. And then you can kind of see a crack forming at the top of this here issue kind of goes to the top of the screen there. We have a very similar issue on this side here. You can see the crack there. All right, besides the big one that Zach's working on, we have a bunch of these little guys. Um, we, we have to decide if we're gonna treat all of them. And that's kind of the question, how far do you go? Um, we are going to treat the ones with bubbling rust and we are not gonna treat the ones that don't have it. Here you can see our plan of attack for the rust spots on the top of the van. 
wire wheel them, rust encapsulate them, bondo to fill them up, primer to seal it, paint to seal that. And then we sand it all smooth and you never see any of it because we cover it with vinyl. And here you can see that the color match is really, really dang close. So we're happy with it. Looks like it's just you and me, a Dremel and some rust spots. We're getting there. Okay, this is one of the medium sized spots at the back of the van. As you can see, I've got it masked off with some cap and crunch. Hashtag not sponsored yet. Um, all I gotta do is prep it with a little acetone. And then we're gonna start with a base coat of uh, rust encapsulating primer. Got a coat of primer on it, but it has to dry. And before we put something else on top of it, it needs to dry for like three hours. So, we're gonna start working on some vinyl. Come on, let's take a look. Yeah, I find this just as satisfying as the uh, plasma cut parts we made. Because at the end of the day, we're taking something that, that didn't exist, you know, numbers and dots on a computer, and then we'll, we output it and it, it's something physical. Let's show them close up of one of these electrics. And then let's get one on the van. Hey, you can see me. In fact, I spent a lot of time getting this beautiful stripe into place. We're gonna use a couple tools, a squeegee, um, a cutter, and then we're also gonna use this finish tape in the back corner. We'll show you how this works. But most important thing is start with a clean surface. We've prepped this with 70-30 isopropyl alcohol water mix and uh, now we're ready to apply. So, the people on the internet suggest starting in the middle with a piece of tape, pulling everything off, um, removing the backer, and then taping it down slowly. So that's what we're gonna do. All right, midway is about here, would you say, Zach? It looks like a good spot to start. Okay. Perfect. Let's do the other side. All right. Let me apply the pressure and all. Good news for us, a computer cut these out. So if we screw anything up, we just take it off and have a computer cut another one out. <laughs> Best case scenario, just don't screw anything up.
Oh yeah. I'm very happy with that. Very satisfying, gotta say. So for this corner, we're gonna have two pieces of overlapping vinyl. This is actually gonna cover it. And in order to cut that, we're using this green knifeless edge tape. So basically once it's down, we're gonna reveal this microfilament in here and it's gonna cut through it. Okay, I got this knifeless edge tape. It's a little finicky. Everybody knows it's finicky. Um, what you kind of got to do is get it started. You can physically cut the filament out of the thing and that works. And then once you get it separated, don't clip your nails before you do this. Pro tip. Okay, once you get it started, it's a breeze. You got to make sure your vinyl's down where you want it and then zoop, it's done. Just like that. And these guys can come off, these guys can come off, your green guys can come off, and you can, just like you're, just like that, you're done. And if your vinyl's a little crooked, don't worry, because nobody's going to say anything. Everybody's real polite on the internet. Okay, it's fixed enough. It looks really good. I really like it. Um, you know, we thought and thought and thought about it, so we had a good idea of what we were talking about, but, you know, there's nothing like seeing it for real once it's on, and it looks sharp. You agree? I agree. Yeah, it looks sharp. Okay, Bondo action happened here. This is not ideal. There was some interaction with the, uh, the, the rust encapsulator. It picked up some color. I'm not gonna worry about it too much. I'm gonna keep, uh, we're gonna sand this smooth and get her pretty. This is one of my best ideas I've ever executed on. It's a filing cabinet box that's watertight with little file folders and sandpaper organized by grid. I, I love this thing. Okay, we're gonna take these to the roof. We're gonna do some sanding. Here we go. If I do my job well at this point, we will not see any red. Okay, because we didn't need to see red anywhere where it wasn't bare metal. So in theory, if I sand everything off so it's either blue or filler, I'll have a perfectly level surface. It's probably not gonna happen because things don't really work like that. But I'm going slow, taking my time, I'm using a small tool and hoping for the best. Bondo on the van. Makes the holes look not so bad. Alright, the tape's gonna come off next. And we're gonna work on these transitions. I think they teach you to brush your teeth. This is exactly what you wanted. All of the overspray, all of the bondo, all of the extra stuff has been kind of pulled back. All right, so now that I'm done with the 220, I'm going back over it with 400 and some water to lubricate the surface. It'll make the sandpaper last longer and it'll give us a nicer finish. 
After this, we're gonna go to primer. Let that dry. 10 buck. 400 grit. Water and spray bottle. Okay, take a look. Gaze upon our wondrous blue spot. We've added some color to where there was primer previously, and now we're gonna continue to sand it down. Oh, four hundo. Then we're going to eight hundo. Four hundo, that ain't nothing. Look, I gotta get the I gotta get the surface down. Take it down to four hundred first, then to eight hundred, then we'll jump to the big boy. Or the little boy. Jamba. Depending on how you look at it. Twelve hundred. It's really nice when it's wet. Blue like ass when it dries. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> looks bad when it dries. Yeah, it looks uh, looks great. You can't even you can't even tell where the patches are. They blend seamlessly, seamlessly to the touch. <laughs> okay, let's get a close up. Yeah, there's a sheen difference and a color difference. But the rust is encapsulated, it's sealed from water intrusion if it ever did get water under it for any reason, so we can get the vinyl on it and it'll look perfect. Yep. This is what I'm thinking. Can you see me? You could see me. Okay. Magnet here, magnet here. Cut the thing, pull it tight, flip it over, start tacking here, and they go that way. Okay. Yeah? minutes of frustration we're gonna turn you off I'm filming now all right Zach we are at an inflection point where we have to make a decision and right now you think maybe we can still salvage this tell us what you're gonna try I mean maybe I don't know so I figured we would kind of get it pretty flat over the whole thing and then where the ridges were of course it would you know not be in them but then we would heat it and push it in and stretch it in but when we started, it seemed like that was more stretch than it wanted to give. And then we were like, oh crap, now what do we do? So we tried some other stuff, and now we're like, well, let's just heat the hell out of it and see if we can shove it in there and if it will give us that much stretch. If it does, 
great, we'll push forward. If it doesn't, it's ruined, we'll pull it off, and we'll talk about what else we can do. So basically the thought is we're being too ginger and you're just gonna go like ham hock. <laughs> Perfect. All right, let's ham hock right. it. Ham hock it. And apparently, you can get it to stretch that much, uh, but uh, apparently you have to know what you're doing. Okay, well this first little bit has taught us some lessons. Um, we're gonna go ahead, rip it up, do some more learning, because apparently that's what we need to do at this stage. I'm just gonna go ahead and say, this was a win. We got really cool stripes on the side. Yeah. We both learned a whole lot about vinyl. Yes, we did. And we have a continuing education plan in order to further that knowledge. I like it. Optimism at its best. Moving forward. Pressing on. Learning things. I'm running out of stuff. You got anything? Nope. Okay. Come back in two weeks, hopefully. Yeah. We'll More bad things. It'll be adequate. Be good, people. Maybe we'll paint it. Oh my gosh, that would be so much easier.